Hey, we're live again on another episode of Talk Power BI Fridays. This is a special one though, my friends. This is a really special one because this is the challenge edition. If you didn't know, how come you didn't know? We got the five day challenge going on. It's been six months since we offered it. And this time's all new. Hey, there's still time to sign up. All you have to do is just this, just go to powerbichallenge.com and sign up there and you're in. And you can catch up. You're going to get access to day one, two, and three. Good thing we have the weekend in front of us. And uh, yeah, you can use that time to catch up. So that's uh, that's us. That's what's going on. I'm going to say hi to folks on the phone. What's going on? I expected my Power BI challenges to be here, more of them. But that's okay. That's cool. Uh, okay, people are kind of filtering in. Uh, that's awesome. Let's uh, Let's say hello. So I'm going to say hi first to... So if you're watching, joining us uh, online, <laughs> I'm a little off my script today, uh, then uh, do say hi. Do say hi in the chat box. Let me know where you're calling in from, where you're watching us from. And I'm going to come back and say my hellos. Oh, already you see Anil says greetings from uh, India. Uh, Sagar is here. Jen Nabel, Sight for Sore Eyes, always good to see you here. And we have Heather. Heather, good to see you. Heather is a member of Learn Power BI family, not just... Any member, I think she's been on the Talk Power BI show twice, at least. <laughs> you know, not counting the ones in the future that she's going to be at. Uh, so yeah, we're going to we're excited about that. So again, and we have uh, Steve and Vivek on the phone. Can uh, let's check, uh, make sure the audio is working. Maybe not. Uh, is it working? Hold on. Q two and all right. So Steve. Uh, I think uh, Grant bailed, but <laughs> glad you held on. I don't think my audio was coming through on the yeah. phone, was it? It, it? it wasn't coming on through GoToMeeting, but it was working on uh, YouTube. So I was seeing okay. if it was on my end or your end, but it's good yes. now. Yes, it was my end. <laughs> All right, great. Let's see who else is on. We got uh, uh, Tom from Denver. Okay, I was going to say Red Scooter, but I know the name. That's always good. Uh and I'm going to pop it out just so it's uh, closer to me. And, and folks, we will start out in a bit. And I have maybe maybe a quick story that we'll start out with. So, Laundra, you, you have to, hey, when we meet, you know, when I'm in Houston or you're in Seattle, you have to tell me how to pronounce your name. Or if you call in. So, Karen, Agarwal, uh, Karen says hi. Hello, my friend. Uh, James from Atlanta, Georgia. Uh, love that place. My brother is there, so I'm a bit partial. Andy from Germany, and time and effort in the community. You know what we're going to do, Grant, is here. So this one, today, we, we kind of open it up to... Uh, to uh, well, so, Laundra, you, you have to... Hey, when... Okay, Laundra, friend. So maybe, maybe the folks who are here... So this was... F All right, cool. That's great. I, and who else does see? I see Grant Larson from Denmark. Awesome, good to have you guys here. So again, this is, well, the idea was, we'll see how this goes, was to dedicate this to the Power BI challengers. I did come up with a name this morning. Uh, and what I wanted to show you was, so guys, uh, I'll admit it has been, I've gone kind of back and forth on Facebook. Now we do have a pretty amazing kick-ass Facebook group. So for our paid course, what we do is, we actually do a few things. But two of them are we have our, our um, a Facebook group and we also have an online discussion forum built inside the course because we know that Facebook doesn't work for everybody. But for this challenge, I was somehow very hesitant. I was like, oh, you know, should we do it? Should we not do it? And I'm glad we did it. So if you go to PowerBIChallenge.com, you can also get an invite to be part of this Power BI Challengers Group. <laughs> now it is an official name. I'm trying to make this smaller. And and folks, so there are, there are like there are like hundreds of folks going through the challenge. They until last night there were only about 29 in this group, which couldn't have been better if you ask me. Oh, cool, two people want to join the group um, because the interaction was amazing. Interaction was really amazing, uh, and a lot of people. We're coming in, sharing the stories, uh, posting assignments, helping, getting help, 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 helping others, pointing out mistakes 
<laughs> very politely. <laughs> I was like, Avi, is this video supposed to cut off at 2 minutes and 22 seconds? And I'm like, okay, no, it's not. <laughs> and we fixed that. So that's been really cool. I was I was, I was, was so surprised. And and I'll admit, guys, sometimes it's it's like one of those things, right? This, this And that what also, also did was it energized me a little bit more about my own community, about our Learn Power BI student community. And I... And I, you know, and I popped over there, and you know, and ended up doing a video for Kevin and all that stuff. So, so yeah, sometimes kind of one thing, one aspect of your life can empower the other. And you've always heard, uh, heard me talk about this whole work-life balance BS, which I don't believe in. It doesn't work like that. It's not a, a, a tightrope that you got to walk, walk on. And it's not like, oh, if you're if you're leaning too much in work, you're taking away from family. And if you're leaning too much in family, you're taking away from work. It doesn't work like that. Anyway. So uh, I'm going to share, while we're still warming up here, I guess, are we warming up? I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to share a quick story, which uh, ended up happening when I went live inside this group like 30 minutes ago. And I, I typed it in, so maybe my live is here, and I edited it because initially it didn't say this. It said the power of 60 seconds, which 60 seconds can be really powerful, and I'll say that for another day. But let's come back here. Uh, but again, I'll, I'll maybe leave this uh, this challenge page. So powerbichallenge.com, go ahead and sign up. Join the awesome stuff. The, join the Power BI Challengers. So the, um, so when my son was young, toddler, two years, something like that, I would tuck him into bed, and he would ask for stories. And uh, I don't know, I mean, uh, I wouldn't read him storybooks not quite sure why I would always make up stories and if I may say so myself they were pretty fantastic <laughs> they were pretty awesome so a lot of them involved uh, uh, wild animals bear was a popular one and it was usually the the baby the, the you know the child who's the protagonist and I remember one story the the baby bear and I might guys I might warning I might choke up on this I don't know why but um, the baby bear uh, his father is, is, is lost or trapped somewhere and the baby bear needs to rescue uh, his father and he goes on this series of adventures and, you know, the creek is blocked and he does this go, goes on a whole series of adventures like does this, does that, solve this, does this and he's using his strength, he's using his whatever and, and he has a, a friend they're tag teaming right? they're tag teaming and, and they're going on all of this adventure together mm. and until <laughs> There's a part where I choke up until the the last step where he where he can't solve it, where he can't get over it, and his friend is not helping. And then at that point in the story, you realize that the friend was imaginary. The friend was never there. It was just the baby bear doing those things, but he had made up this imaginary friend to kind of support him in a way. I don't think I said that in the story. It was just like, oh, gosh, the, 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 the friend wasn't real. Oh, that's all I said. And, of course, the point of the story was you got to believe in yourself. You got to believe in yourself. Nobody else is going to believe in you. Well, I mean, maybe they can. I believe in my students, right? But until you believe in yourself, it, it's, it's for nothing. All right, so happy ending. The BB Bear, you know, finds that belief, goes, rescues his dad. But that's not the point of the story at all. <laughs> I was not really telling you the bear story. <laughs> Otherwise, it did a really horrible job. My know, my what, what, that, what just happened? The point of the story is this. Is that uh, a lot of folks are sharing what, I call, what I'm calling the origin stories. So if you, if you join this group, and of course this happens in, inside a Learn Power BI group as well, where people, people come in and say, hey, uh, this is me. So, uh, man, they've been Shweta. I think uh, stored, uh, sh shared a story. I saw um, you know, Charles and and uh, oh gosh, uh, the name was hard to pronounce. Julian and so forth. So, a lot of people shared the stories. But the key thing is this: when you think about heroes or superheroes, what makes them? What makes them superheroes? Think about every single superhero you can bring up in your mind, right? It's not their superpowers. It is not their superpowers. Right? So imagine if there was one guy who's like, yep, you know, I was just born this way. I was like, yeah, I was rich, good looking, and have these superpowers. That's 
that's not a superhero. Nobody's going to pay attention to that. Nobody's going to go watch that movie, read that book, right? Superheroes are really made up of their origin stories. It's their making. And what is a part, a crucial part of the origin story is conflict. It's struggle. If that is true, why don't we embrace it? Well, we don't, right? And when we're going through it, and I know when I'm talking about this, some people are like, oh, it'll be easy for you to say, man. You're on the other side. Well, we all have our struggles, right? At any stage of your life, believe me, you know. I know I've looked up to people who were like there and said, oh, God, you know, that's where I want to be. And you get there and, and it's like, whoa, okay, this is what they were dealing with. That's life, right? And somebody's looking at you, exactly, yeah, you, right now, and saying, oh, my gosh, if only I could be like that. So I think Charles or, or somebody else introduced themselves in the group and said, oh, I'm just starting out. I'm like, dude, just stop right there. You're not starting out <laughs> because you're going to you're going to freak the hell out of people who are really starting out. You know, you, you, so right. So so we don't acknowledge that. But the key is this. When you are going through struggle, when you are going through conflict, what if we switch that? What if what if we saw it Hollywood style? I right? think think about like an epic production. You are the star. And now you're going through this and it's, it's like hell. It's hard. But guess what? It's just part of your origin story. That's what they're going to write in the comic books later on. It's like, oh, yeah, then this happened. And oh, my God, and this and it was so close. It was touch and go. And nobody knew how things were fall, going to fall, uh, you know, how they're going to go. But then the hero pulled through. And this happened and that happened and all the great things. So struggle, you can look at it that way or you can suffer through it. Your choice. Cool. Uh, all right. Uh, a few more hellos. Raji says hi. Arun says hello. Monali, hello from Ottawa. Uh, Monali, I think. Well, are you? Are you? Did you join the Learn Power BI family, or I saw you on the challenge? One of those things. Either way, is hello and welcome. Mm, okay, I don't want. I don't want my video. But do, 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 do. From Mallorca, Pedro says hi. All right, cool. So, folks, uh, let me go on the phone. So we have Grant. We have uh, Prabhupreet. Prabhupreet, I know, is one of our fellow Power BI challengers. We got Stephen Wake. Mm, so yeah, does anybody have? Uh, any 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 uh, any questions or thoughts, or just check in with me, especially Prabhupreet. How is it? How is it going through the challenge? Yeah, it's going good. It's really fantastic. Terrific. And and so remind me, are, are you the one at TCS who who discovered Power BI like a year ago or something like that? Yeah, yeah. Oh, I was, okay. Uh, when, when Power BI Power BI was launched, I was working in TCS yeah. as a vendor for Microsoft, and then at that time they were like we were creating the reporting and stuff, and mm -hmm. then at that time we started doing it with Power BI. That's yeah, and terrific. I really find it interesting. Yeah. Okay, so just curious, did you already have kind of a background in reporting and analysis before that, or Power yeah, BI was yeah. your okay? Yeah, right. yeah, I have like I have worked with Power BI for almost like one year. Yeah, but before year. before Power BI, were you were you doing reporting using some other using tool? Excel? A... We were doing using Excel. All right, okay, so you know what yeah. I'm going to ask you. Well, how yeah. do you compare the new world and the old world? Like, yeah, I mean. What, yeah, what, it is entirely different. Like both the things are entirely different. Like I uh -huh. find things uh, very easy with Power BI mm. as I compare with Excel. And yeah. it is doing the amazing things like uh, customers were really impressed by looking at the visualizations and everything yeah. in like one dashboard. Like okay. it was very yeah. fascinating. Yeah, that's that's great. That's great. Uh, so so that's what customers like. I'm just curious. W tell me a little bit more about like one specific thing which stands out for you. Yeah, there was a like reporting, monthly reporting that uh, Microsoft uh, store tra uh, order tracking uh, that mm -hmm. was that were done by manually by the customer in UK, and yeah. uh, then they like they just uh, was were discussing this thing with us. Then we yeah. started like thinking that we can like uh, modify it in the form of Power BI. Yeah. So what we did is we created the pipeline from SQL to uh, Power BI cloud service, and then uh, and it was all automatic with Power BI and then yeah. uh, and like it really solved their problem and also a lot of manual efforts. That's a great story. Yeah. Terrific. 
Thank you. That's great. Uh, Thank you. Awesome. All right. Anybody else on the phone? Well, hey, Avi. Grant here. Hey, Grant. So I want to report a big win. Oh, wow. Love those. Yeah. Get right ahead. You remember on the call yesterday, we were talking about using Switch? Uh, yes, yes. The Switch, true, for the uh, levels or something, right? There is a point levels that offices were achieving based on, you know, yeah. a, a calculation, uh, uh, another measure that Got I had it. counted. Yeah, yeah, sustainability initiative, yeah. You put me on the right path, my friend. I appreciate it so much. I was able to get that to work so that I displayed yeah. the, the point values uh, based on that previous measure. And that allowed me also to go forward and create another measure, which is needed, which is how many points do you need to get to the next level? And so ah, I not, love that. Not only, not only did I use what I learned and uh -huh. what, what you uh, gave to me as an example yesterday, that was yeah. brilliant. Yeah. Uh, but I was able to then take it a step further and use it in my next measure. And so that was just, it was uh, such a, a gratifying experience. Oh, gosh. Uh, tell me about it. So, yeah. I mean, and of course, what I'm seeing, hearing, as you as you're talking about this is, is what I call kind of peeling onion and and, and I don't know I mean maybe that's not the best uh, analogy uh, but uh, yeah but it is like going on a journey it, it kind of unravels and, and and as you're deeper you go oh what about this and what about that so you're you're doing it that's that's great it can be better what, and what's what's amazing about this is that what a lesson learned because previously I had built a Power BI report and I was basically being lazy because mm. inside that Excel spreadsheet, which is my source file, yeah, uh, the gal was doing a lot of the calculations to, to determine things like, uh, you know, what number, number of percentage percentages of completion and things of that nature. Yeah. So, but yeah. in this example. I'm connecting to 30 different Excel spreadsheets, one for each office. And I, yeah. I don't want to go into it yeah. down the road, use a database or something like that for a source. But in this case, I had a short time period to uh, deliver a dashboard. Yeah. And the spreadsheets were going to be our source. Yeah. <clears throat> when I started creating multiple queries against those uh, multiple sources, mm -hmm. I ran into a performance issue with my PC that was just bog bogging it down and slowing it down. Okay. And it forced me to realize, Grant, don't be lazy. You can calculate these same values instead of pulling it multiple times from the same spreadsheet. Yeah. And so I'm streamlining the, the entire process. I'm, I'm really going back to the drawing board. Yeah. Uh, I believe that my next solution will be much more efficient and much more efficient. Oh, that's great. I'm so happy to hear that. So uh, obviously, I mean, I, I've seen how this do it, you know, the first one where, you know, it's that transition period between kind of Excel to Power BI, where you're not entirely comfortable, but I think it's okay to to have it happen over time, as long as you're kind of aware of that and constantly, you know, just moving in that direction. So that's, that's fine. And, and I'm glad you kind of took that step to say, you know, I'm not gonna, you know, kind of, I'm gonna do it in Power BI, rather than kind of uh, calculate it there. Uh, what I wanted to ask you was, that sometimes, and I'm not sure it may or may not apply to your scenarios, but sometimes if I like connect to files individually versus I say go to this folder, get all the files, the folder option is sometimes much faster. So does that apply to you? Uh, are you going to a folder and pulling everything in? Yeah, and I don't want to go into a deep dive into this particular example because, hmm. uh, you know, there's some other variables that I need to consider. Okay, you know, okay. the, all, Got it. all of the files are, are sitting in a SharePoint library that's a subordinate site to a team site. Mm -hmm. So I'm, I'm syncing that library to my PC locally. So Got it. Got does it. it, you know, location of where those files are make a difference when I'm working in the Power BI model? You know, would it be different if I had all those files local on my PC versus in the cloud? You know, and mm -hmm. the, the only time I see a issue is when I'm working in uh, the Power BI desktop yeah. and then I, you know, I'm a query editor or something like that. But once it's been published to the cloud, it seems to play nice and, and behave nice. So 
I mean, I've, I I don't want to go down the road also of, you know, the, the issues I'm having with uh, scheduling a refresh or things of that yeah. nature. I've got some challenges still ahead of me, but the lesson learned, and this is what I take from you, is don't be afraid to face the dragon because you do, you, eventually you can slay the dragon, you can master it, and it, it's really not that scary, uh, you know. Yeah. Be, don't be afraid to make the mistakes because you learn from the mistakes. Oh, gosh, um, yeah. I mean, and, and we all know that feeling, right? That moment, because we have experienced it, uh, certainly at some point or another, where you were afraid of something or you were unsure, let's say, or sometimes you were scared to death. And then when you did it, and it wasn't as bad at all, right? I mean, it's it's never as bad as you imagine. It's usually the imagination which makes the dragon so big and you step into it. So, yep, and uh, once you've done it, it's, it's, it's always easy. So... <laughs> Yeah, that's great. That's great. Awesome, man. Thanks for sharing that. Yeah. All right, so we're gonna switch back to. I know some some new folks joined uh, on the phone. Um, I think it's Adina. Hey, Adina, how's it going? Good. Hi. Hi. So, are are you are you one of our Learn Power BI family members? Or are you one of our Power BI challengers? I'm one of the challenger for now. Awesome. That's great. So. Tell me how how is it how has it gone so far? Maybe tell me tell us your Power BI origin story. How, how did you get, get started with Power BI? Uh, well, for starters, I'm not sure if you hear me right. Hmm. Do you? I uh, yeah, yes. Okay, perfect. Because I I didn't have my headphones on. Uh, well, yeah. my Power BI origins actually come from work because my uh, manager. Uh, actually introduced me to power bi a while ago uh he just gave me two days in my training period mm -hmm. when i was first hired and just let me play around with it yeah. and uh since then i i i started to look more into it yeah so wow so wait was this like you were stepping into a new job a new role and and the first day they just threw into power, power bi I mean, that, that's a... it was more like the second week ah. <laughs> after i passed yeah. the more generic training about the company <laughs> the tools that oh, we use and the uh that is that so is awesome it's... uh uh that's great and and how has it been since so how long ago was that uh a few months ago like six okay. months ago but uh, i yeah. haven't really um done anything serious with it got it tell me more about your role what, what uh, like uh i work so. as uh, I, I work in the operations department i do reports uh -huh. a lot and uh yeah. i've taken yeah. some time uh to really understand the the business and yeah, what yeah. is needed in those reports. And now I am starting to uh, search for ways to improve uh, how they are done now, which is mostly Excel. Yeah, that's great. So that was one of my favorite things when I stepped into new jobs, which was inheriting other people's reports. No, just kidding. <laughs> I never liked that. Oh, God, it was a nightmare. You step into something and you're like, oh, my, what is this? And usually that person has moved on or, you know, they spent 10 minutes with you and then they're gone. And then you're looking at it and then you're seeing, oh, yeah, I see that they go from here to there. Like I see the starting point and end result. How, how do they actually do it? Or you forget one step. And heck, I shouldn't blame others for it. Sometimes that would happen to my own report. Like, how did I do it last month? So did you <laughs> did you go through some of that? Did you inherit a set of reports? Yes, all, all the reports, okay. well, okay. most of the reports that I do are inherited. Okay. And I've been through that. But, you know, I, I try to just uh, make it work without yeah. judging good. too much. Yeah, that's good. So you may not be worried about that quite yet but there's one thing which did uh, kind of bother me a little bit when I was uh, in, in like an analyst role was that y you kind of never knew or never knew really too well like sometimes there were lots of reports and you didn't know which one was kind of important which one was uh, being used um, and and so forth have you have you faced that here or maybe in a, in a prior spot as well uh, yes, a little. And yeah. um, at first, I just treated them with the same level of importance. I just mm -hmm. did my best 
in yeah. all of them in understanding yeah. how they work or uh, what data do i need if i need to check something with other people and that is what uh, is i find the most difficult or uh, time consuming to check up uh, with other people yeah. uh, if the data is correct if the data is ready to be um, used um yeah. Uh -huh, so yes, I, I have I understand what you're saying. And, and folks, there is there is the one person level of it which I experienced, and Adina uh, maybe is experiencing. But there is a bigger level to it, which I talk to companies who are transitioning to Power BI. And by the way, this is the worst way to transition to Power BI. And they say, "Oh, Avi, we have uh, cataloged all of our reports. We have 600 reports, and we're going to transition one by one." <laughs> to Power BI and I'm like uh I dude I want no part of that so uh yeah this is the like the worst imaginable way actually there are some worse ways the other one of my favorite or least favorite is that oh Avi uh, we spent two years fixing our ETL and data warehouse and now we're ready for Power BI and I'm like no you were ready two years ago <laughs> but you know whatever <laughs> two years so um yeah this is never fun um, I'm, I, you know, so I, I, I like, I like creating new stuff in Power BI, at least for the first projects and, and, and until you can s convince the people. And even if you are the CEO of the company, you still got to convince the people because guess what? And we've talked about that inside our course, and I'm sure each and every one of you has experienced that, that pull towards the export to Excel. So we were just talking about this yesterday, I think in the class <laughs> call where, where uh, not one, not two, but three of the callers talked about how they show them the, the Power BI dashboards and all they say is, oh, this is great. How can I, how can I get an Excel? And, and, and That it's actually thing. happened to me today. We had a yeah. meeting and mm -hmm. two of the people that implemented the reports yeah. were presenting them to a bunch of managers and they showed them around uh, yeah. all the filters all that they could do. And one of them just said, and how do I export it to Excel? Yes. <laughs> when yes. do I need to? Yeah, yeah. So, yeah. I mean, the general consensus in our call yesterday was that it, it takes some time. You gotta kind of treat it with love. You can't hit them on the head with data, as one of my friends says. Um, but that is a real thing. And again, so folks, we, we talk about kind of there's the there's the Power BI skill set, but there's this this soft skill set. And I like to, I mean, Adina, you certainly kind of recognize that. We said, hey, it's 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 about the people. And I I've used that phrase where I say. Power BI and tech, all of this is, is more about people than I'd ever realized. So you clearly kind of realize that as well. Uh, I will say that the usage stuff, uh, eventually, if you do go to powerbi.com, it does start doing, well, it does, uh, you can see usage reports and stuff, which which is really useful. Uh, of course, starting out, um, uh, yeah, I mean, I wouldn't I wouldn't think too much about it, but that's, uh, that's great. I feel like I had another thought here. I'm going to let it go. Maybe it'll come back to me. Hey, thanks for checking in. So uh, for the uh, for the challenge, uh, how far into it are you? Are you all caught up with day day two? Today is day three. So the, that, the DAC stuff, how is it going with the challenge? Uh, yes, I was uh, actually just looking into the videos for uh, day three. Oh, nice. I was finishing up with day two and that's, just that's starting great. the videos for day three. And then I saw the <laughs> that you announced on uh, the Facebook group that we we have a live session also. Awesome, great. Well, thanks for checking in, and uh, yeah, of course Thank we're going to hang out on the Facebook as well. And we have day four and five still to come. Thanks. Okay, let's see. So Maxwell, my friend, you need some help? Just dial in. Uh, and uh, Sharon, I'm going to use that name. Region-wise report share to respective business heads. Mm, boy, that's, uh, uh, I think I know what you're asking about, Sharon. So, uh, to, actually, let me check in with the phone. Does somebody has any, any specific Power BI question? Actually, any thoughts or comments on the phone? All right, cool. So, YouTube, YouTube, hi there, my friends. Maxwell, do dial in because you didn't give much detail, but let's see if we can uh, uh, explore this question here. Do, do, do. Mm -hmm. 
So region wise, can we do real time streaming? So region wise report, there's a region wise report and you want to share it to respective business heads. So I'm going to make some assumptions or maybe lay out some scenarios. Oh, actually, maybe we just go with the solutions. So one solution could be, I should bring out my, my trusty adventure works report is you give them the same report with a slicer and you say, click here, you instruct them. Now that's a fair solution. Why not? That's a great solution. But that may not make you happy. So let's explore some other ones. So you give them a same report with a slicer. This is not, not recommended. Not generally recommended, I would say. Is uh, create multiple reports. And it's actually a trade-off. So you can, the advantage of multiple reports is it can be customized pros is that you can customize for each one. Inevitably, once you go to different department heads, one say, oh, this is awesome, can you do this? And another person would say something else. Uh, the con though is that uh, now you're maintaining multiple reports. And now the big boss, CEO, the boss of all these business heads says, oh, all the reports should attract this new KPI. And now you have, I don't know, depending on how many business heads you have, you have like 10 reports to update. So that's a challenge. I had something there which was another pro and con. Maybe it'll come back to me. So that generally I don't go. That's not my. That's not what I would reach for. Mm. Another option. So this one. What is the con for this? The con is that every time, every single time they gotta uh, every single. Actually, you know what? This is not that bad. So boy, guys, this is where Power BI just they just kind of keep upping the game. It's incredible. Every single time, user needs to make a selection. Now, here's where I need help. So my YouTube friends and my uh, folks on the phone, <laughs> I think that there is a new feature, relatively new feature in Power BI. And what it does, it remembers your filters or something like that. Or is it the bookmark? Yeah, I'm not I'm not crystal. That's why so um, a new update uh, uh, platform, which is powerbi.com. I'll just say powerbi.com platform kind of sounds weird. Powerbi.com remembers your filter setting. How awesome is that? That one is really cool. Uh, so if that is the case, then this discount doesn't apply. Okay, but still, let's keep going. And what we have is, um, so, and instead of this, what else can we do? We can, we can create a single report. Hey, folks, I'm gonna put you on mute. Um, yeah, folks on the phone, just uh, go on mute unless you were, you were talking to me. Um, so s you can create a single report and use, uh, uh, gosh, w what is it called? I, I think you need to, it needs to be a report level filter and, and pass that in as URL. And then you give, hand out different URLs to different URLs to each department department head business head that one is awesome another approach can be use role level security I don't think you are that's what you need because if that's what you needed you would have mentioned it or, or said something about that something about they can't see each other's data something like that obviously people don't often unless you know this term you don't use it role of security 
what you said, like, no, we, we don't want this person to see that person's data. That's how they usually say it. Uh, and it does solve two problems. So it solves the customization problem too, where when R&D or, or, or the operations or support person goes in, if role of security is in there, they automatically just see their own department. So it's, you know, it feels customized, personalized. Um, but what is the disadvantage of that? Hmm. I'm not sure I've actually thought about that. What is the disadvantage of role of security? I'll, I'll leave that hanging. See if uh, somebody on the phone has any thoughts or YouTube. I know there's a little bit of lag, but uh, yeah, if you think of that, so cons, I'll just write that. Disadvantage of this. Ooh. All right, terrific. Let's uh, let's check in. So we might have had uh, some new folks join on the phone. Well, hello and welcome. Good to be hanging out with you. Uh, so phones, uh, obviously, you guys get to unmute yourself and just just ask questions. So it's kind of unfair. <laughs> no, it's all good. Um, so yeah. So and we go usually switch back and forth between um, you know, the phone and YouTube chat. So on the phone, uh, another call out. Uh, does anybody have any questions on the phone? So Avi Grant here, um, I've, I've got some questions around, uh, and it kind of pertains to uh, what you were talking about that people are asking for Excel exports, right? From your Power BI yeah. report. Yeah. <clears throat> when I think about it, what are the, the, the best ways to share the reports? And mm. so it, it, when you think about it, I'm thinking about when you publish your reports. And so there's a couple of ways that I've been publishing my reports. One is I, uh, there's a, a nice web part that on modern SharePoint pages that you can mm. uh, add a Power BI report right on a SharePoint page. Nice. Uh, the Teams application uh, has a widget so you can add a tab to yeah. a channel, uh, you know, that's a, that is a Power BI report. And I use that. And of course, this is this is internal to the company, and so. Mm -hmm up the permissions and share the reports, the Power BI reports. Yeah. And one of the things I've noticed with, with teams is people, if they're a member of the team, they still can't see the report unless you've shared the Power BI report with them. So, oh, and I haven't figured out a way to share the Power BI report with the team member yet, unless it's... Yeah. I, yeah, I don't... That one... It, doesn't sound good and frankly but well, i haven't no, tried it, it myself but in the demos yeah, so what, it, it didn't it didn't seem that way but of course you, the demos are sometimes demos uh, so you can you can um you can share the power bi report with a distribution list or a, a, you know so yeah in those cases there you know i can use something like a, an everyone group you know uh you know or, or a group that represents everybody in the company um, mm. And then it's it, in kind of security by obscurity, right? If they don't know it's there. Yeah. <laughs> but in fact, you know, yeah. somebody could access it by simply going into Power BI and opening up the shared with me and boom, it should, it'll be there. So, um, and yeah. in my cases, again, no harm, no foul, because a lot of these are open public. They're on public web pages anyways. Everybody in the company can see them. Yeah. So, I mean, it's not public, you know, public. It's company wide, right? Company wide. Yes. Yeah. Open company wide. Yeah. So, <laughs> Uh, of course, I work on the corporate side, and we do a lot of consulting with our clients externally. Yeah. So the natural progression will be, how do we share these Power BI reports with our customers and our clients? And what is going to be required of them, if I share a Power BI report with them, do they need a Power BI license? Uh, do they have to sign up? And I've been looking at the, the options. There's the free account, um, yeah. and then there's the standard account. and. Maybe if you could go over that a little bit more to help me yeah. understand, because, and I believe you've done another session on that. So if you could point me towards that session, I'd be happy to rewatch that too. Yeah, there's a video on licensing. I don't go deeper into external clients. I, I mean, I do cover the standard options. So external clients, so, so folks, let's talk about the standard options really quick. And uh, maybe, um, uh, let me see if I can quickly find the video and at least uh, paste it for the audience here. So you guys can watch it later. Okay, I'll multitask and welcome to. Okay, and here to this one. Okay, got it. So that one, and I'm gonna paste it in the chat box here. Uh, yes, this video, Barbie Premium Pro Free, uh, and of course I'm I 
uh, I suppose I, I would have talked about in the course as well. Uh, so the standard options are, of course, the free version. There is pro and there is premium. And I guess there is a on site options too. Okay. But that's usually the Power BI report server, which usually requires a premium license. So it's in a way, it's not that different. All of these are still essentially using one of these elements. I mean, still, this doesn't avoid the licensing, it's just how you're surfacing it. So uh, that at least that's the way I, I see it. So these are the standard options. Now that a uh, little bit of challenge with, so internally, it just becomes a decision point. Now I, I will make a note here though, that guys, I try to push the discussion for licensing as far out in a new engagement as I can. Not because I'm trying to trick them or something, because what I've usually seen is that Power BI, when they, if, if the discussion comes up at the beginning, and I've seen this happen with, with companies and teams where they'll say, oh, we're considering Power BI, we're doing a cost analysis, you know, and, and, uh, and uh, it's just, I don't think that works. So I try to try to persuade them to not do it that way. I said, well, I don't know, maybe you guys would hate the tool. Have you tried the tool yet? I said, oh, no, we wouldn't understand what, what it's going to cost the whole company. I'm like, well, I don't know, just try it. So I encourage them to just try it out. And of course, I say, guys, just do Power BI Desktop. It's free. It's free for everybody. Just go do that and just come back and say, okay, cool. We did Power BI Desktop. And of course, I walk them through that. So I said, Power BI Desktop, great. Well, maybe some of you can get like trial licenses. Just, just sign up on PowerBI.com, get a 30 or 60 day trial, whatever they offer and then start sharing, oh, how's that going in 30, 60 days? And what I'm trying to do is, frankly, make it make it a fair, or uh, so instead of just looking at cost, I want them to see the cost benefit. And this is where I want them to really apply it because I think the benefits of Power BI are just indescribable. <laughs> I mean, you can try, and you can do the demos, but until you see your data, until you, you know, all the stories, some of the stories we heard here where you, uh, you know, so I think Prabhupreet talked about that where how somebody was uh, working with this manual report and, and so forth. Grant talked about, well, you talked about your own experience earlier and so forth. So you got to see it. So I push it out. All right. So, so that's the standard stuff. Now, so for that one, for a company, well, the usually once they see the benefit, they're more than happy to pay. They say, oh boy, $10 per user per month. That's, that's like nothing depending on the value we'll get. Uh, so yeah, so again, they usually buy 10 license, 30, 50, and they expand from there, and they can go premium as well. But for external client, that one is tricky because sharing reports, I was going to say always requires a license. That's not quite true. Uh, sharing securely requires a license. Uh, requires, uh, right, so which I think I publicly is free, publish web. Uh, but most people don't don't really care about that, so I don't I don't frankly even talk about that. So sharing security does require uh, a license. So this one is a uh, is tricky. Although I think Microsoft has tried to do some uh, some some smart stuff here. So uh, and I'm 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 not. I'll share what I know, which is, I'll admit, bits and pieces. So you can set up an account for your client in your system. And somehow the word federated accounts is coming to me, although the word itself doesn't mean anything, but somehow I, I heard it. So set up an account, like you give them an account on your system and assign a license to them. You, you can do that, which is kind of cool because it makes it convenient. So that is an option, uh, uh, right? Uh, but of course, uh, sometimes the challenge is that, ooh, I don't wanna uh, pay for the licenses. Well, you know, so maybe you can start off this way by assigning a license to them where you were pretty much eating the cost, but then, um, if, you know, they come back, they love it, and they say, oh, cool, now we need 50 users from our organization to have this, and you're thinking, gosh, that's 500 per month or whatever, right? So, uh, so of course, you don't have to do that, even at the beginning, and, and you can just have client buy their own license. And and sharing itself is, is easy, 
So at least through the PowerBI.com platform. Now, uh, I'm not 100% sure about this for external users, but if you're sharing through PowerBI.com, I'll just uh, go to my report, which, where did it go? Here we go. And I'll just type in an external email address and it will work. It, it would just send them a link and as long as they have a paid license, they'll be able to see it. So sharing itself is usually not a problem, at least through a PowerBI.com place. Now, another option that I've explored is where, frankly, this, I don't know how to do this. I, I, I just do not know how to do this one. Mm, uh, this one is an option, but sometimes it's awkward. Often when you're starting out with a client, it's just odd to say them. And of course, if you're a Power BI consultant, man, you, you're charging a pretty penny, penny right? I mean, uh, sometimes hundreds of dollars an hour. So, so asking them to pay for a $10 per user per month license just doesn't seem right. Uh, so what I do is I um, I basically create, uh, I, I think, uh, uh, like a different entity. You know, so so I have my own domain name, obviously.com. So whatever your company is, contoso.com. And you would have all of your kind of employee accounts here. And what you can do is you can say contoso-external or something like that. Right, and and then set up their their accounts for them. Uh, so whatever your client is, Jim. So you will say, hey, Jim, you get this account, and and you assign that license to them. Which uh, actually, now that I'm thinking about it, maybe. So uh, frankly, I use this approach because this was not an option. This this was not an option. This was introduced somewhat recently. So now that I'm thinking about it, it, it seems like that was introduced because they realized that uh, you know people needed help in this scenario. So I, I, I would I would look into this. Uh, that seems like a cleaner way to do what I just described. So that's uh, yeah, that's kind of uh, well, <laughs> the high level at least, uh, you know, kind of the span of uh, what I've dealt with. Mm -hmm. So Grant, what are your thoughts? And so maybe there's, there's me, a, yeah, you a bit more about the yeah. client scenario. There's a couple of things that stick out right right off the bat. I mean, <clears throat> we don't want to, uh, you know, I work on the IT side. We don't want to manage mm -hmm. those accounts. And, and of course, I'm an Azure Active uh, an Azure Global Admin. Mm -hmm. So I, I know I can set up guest accounts in our Azure Active Directory. Yeah. We can assign them Power BI licenses, but I don't want to have that administrative overhead of, 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 if it catches fire and all of a sudden we're getting 10 requests and 20 requests and 50 requests a week. Um, from external people who just, and, and oftentimes, um, so mm -hmm. we enthusiasm within the company to to start leveraging yeah. Power BI and show show the clients what we can do. And so the first thing when somebody uh, gets excited about the fact that they built a, a nice uh, dashboard yeah. uh, using the client data is they want to show it to the client. And yeah. the options that we're using the, so far have been the uh, export to PowerPoint or, you know, the print, you know, print, the, which doesn't yeah. really sh show you the full power of what the Power BI report can do because yeah, you can't. Really. So we, so we're, the question is, and some of the, the the folks that I've been discussing were quite surprised to realize that if you send a sharing invitation to somebody outside the company, mm -hmm. and there, 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 there's two questions. Number, yeah. number one, and I'm trying to encourage everybody to find this information out. Does your client already have Office 365 or not? Because when you were discussing federated, that that's the big deal. Hmm. If they're using Office 365 and we're using Office 365, yeah. then probably no license concern at all because they may have a license already bundled with whatever subscription that they have. So yeah, then say yeah. you can invite them by email, right? Mm -hmm. They click on the link and they use the license that comes with their bundled Office 365 subscription. Yeah, yeah, you're right. Yeah. The challenge comes in with the organizations that haven't embraced Office 365 yet. Um, and so they're going to get an email invitation that says, mm -hmm. hey, would you like to sign up for a free Power BI account? Yeah. Um, and certain organizations are touchy about people signing up for accounts and using their work email address to do that. Mm -hmm. And so we're just exploring, uh, you know, the best ways because, and I've heard uh, some of my colleagues say, Hey, if they need a license, I'll pay for it. So they won't, they won't, uh, they won't quibble yeah. about the, 
but I don't want it to scale out that we, we set a precedent that we're going to be paying for licensing for everybody who wants to try to share a, a Power BI report here or there. Yeah. How big is your organization? How many employees? Over a thousand, yeah, over a thousand employees. A, a thousand employees. Over a thousand. Okay. How many do you think at, at if Power BI was like fully rolled out, how many of them would be using it? Uh, right now, I, I work with, say, 20 people in our organization that I that have pinged me, asked me questions about Power BI. Yeah. But how many licenses and, do you know you guys own right now? Uh, I, every, well, I'm going to say that a more, majority of the people uh, in our organizations have uh, licenses that include at least the, the base Power BI license as part of the subscription. We've got some people that uh, I think are done. Oh, you you guys got it bundled with Office 365, right? Yeah, bundled. It's not. We, yes. Yeah. So that's why sharing within the company is no big thing because I wow. know everybody's got a license. Yeah. I don't have to worry. You yeah. have a license. Do you not have a license? Yeah, but when so. it comes to sharing outside the company, now it becomes a challenge because yeah. you don't know unless we yeah, ask yeah. if they've. Yeah. Well, what I was probing here was I, I didn't I didn't realize that it came bundled. If it hadn't come bundled, bundled, and he was like, "Oh yeah, I mean, we have a hundred licenses right now, and at some point we're gonna have a license for all thousand. Then of course I would have said uh, Power BI Premium because that does that does solve that. But you you guys don't need premium because you already have a license. So oh, dang it. So but um, so with premium you you get un, unlimited readers which does sound nice right yeah, yeah? you bet yes readers okay but i mean it's it's limited by capacity but you know i mean <laughs> i wouldn't be worried about that i mean you you had me microsoft had me at like yeah you can have as many readers as you want so people just reading viewing reports and of course when they say viewing it's not just viewing it's it's um i think it's it's obviously interactive I think it's even like if you put Q and A in there, so it's really awesome reading. So, um, gosh, so if premium was there, they solve it that way, but it doesn't make sense for you because you already have Office three sixty five. Yeah, I I can't I can't really think of an elegant solution. Like I, I don't know now. Of course, I'm not a Microsoft. Uh, Salesperson, but I'm putting trying to put myself in their shoes. Like, what would they recommend you? I'm not really sure. I mean, premium it, does sound like an awesome option, but oh, 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 the one thing that I would say is I don't know. I'm just gonna take a shot in the dark. So if you have SQL Server Enterprise with Software Assurance, then you have premium. <laughs> so, I don't know. so. Um so let me circle back and find out, you know, what our uh, licensing actually is within the organization. Yeah. Uh, because I believe we do. Well, we certainly have SQL Server Enterprise, um, and so with, with SA, the software assurance. That's the magic word, and and with, frankly, yeah. it boggles my mind. Like, how does it work that way? What, what is that? You know, most people have yeah. no idea what the software insurance is. But um, if you have that, then you have premium. It gives gives you premium capacity. Okay. And uh, maybe at some other time we could touch base and uh, help me how I explore that. Because when I looked in Azure Active Directory for my own uh, profile to look at what I've licensed with, it indicates yeah. I've got I've got Power BI free. And I'm like, yeah. well, wait a minute, wait a minute. If I look at the the features that I have active, I can do things that if I look at on the um, the TechNet article that tells me, you know, yeah. you know, uh -huh. features, yeah, feature composition, it looks like I've got. Like, got the pro level uh, feature set. So yeah, I understand exactly what level I've got and what our capabilities are in our testing mm -hmm. hobby. If we yeah. send a yeah. Just, just curious, uh, what is your litmus test? What, what, what do you see that, oh, this feature is working for me. So that is a pro feature. Just wondering what is, what is your test for that? What is, what is just give me well, like I look, I have to look back at the comparison to remember exactly what it was, yeah. but it was some of, the, some of the, the core things that we do all the yeah. time, like, well, uh, sharing is an easy one, right? I mean, sharing, yeah. it's, yeah, I mean, you ask Microsoft, they'll tell you every single time. And of course, they do this this weird uh, uh, wordplay. It was like, oh, no, sharing, sharing, uh, sharing is not paid. Sharing is free. Sharing security is paid. So I, I, ignore all that part. But yeah, I mean, you can share reports and that's good. Another one that I look for 
is analyze in Excel. And I'm actually surprised that that is a, a pro feature. In my mind, it shouldn't be. Because when Power BI, uh, Power BI they, they changed the licensing scheme, what they talked about was, uh, oh, we're, we're simplifying it. And you know, and it's it's all free now. Earlier they had the, uh, I don't know if you remember that, if you're, uh, you were in, uh, you know, so earlier it was like a feature set, which is not unheard of because, uh, you know, think about like how Dropbox works or Slack works. A lot of these services, they have free and premium tiers. So if you have premium, you get something extra. And that's what Power BI was. A free, you, you got, you, sharing was there. Sharing was free. You don't have to pay for sharing, but it was like, um, I don't know, like if you, if you wanted to, I think automated refresh, the Power BI gateway. So they had something like that. And they said, hey, we're simplifying it. <laughs> and, and, and sharing is paid now, but you get all the features free, which wasn't quite true. Anyway, so uh, Analyze in Excel is a, other one that I use. Like, oh, uh, if we can use that. So we can, we can look into that. Um, what am I thinking? Yeah, I mean, I, I have a good feeling about SQL Server Enterprise with SA. So if you, if you have that, I think the path would be for you to, uh, um, yeah, go, go the premium route and that would, then you can add as many readers. So of course the, the way that works is once you have the premium capacity, it's, it's on a workspace basis. So you can go in a workspace and assign it that premium capacity, which is just, I think a slice of the server. That's how I understand it, right? So it's, oh yeah, this this thing runs on that server. Uh, so of course you can't put everything on it because because it's capacity constrained. Imagine, uh, so you would say, oh yeah, this workspace and that workspace and this workspace, these three are gonna be on my premium capacity so that they can be shared with the whole wide world. Um, yeah, all right, cool. So I'll let you check into that, get back to us, see what you find. Thank you. Thank you. Awesome. So, folks, let me circle back and check in on YouTube. How are you doing, my friends? And Maxwell, what happened to you? Uh, if you're still on, dial in. Are you dial in? I didn't even check. I didn't even see. Um, okay, cool. Maybe he dropped off. That's okay. Uh, let me see. Yes, so Heather is absolutely right. Just, just have him try it. <laughs> Okay, some discussion on um, on what Alan was asking, which I don't know what Alan was asking about. Sorry. <laughs> yeah, that had to do with uh, row level security, I believe. Oh, oh yeah, that's actually a good one. Yeah, this oh, not sure you can share the email address. Okay. Well, I'm not sure. Alan, if you're still around, give us a ping. Uh, we can we can cover that here. I had another thought around licensing, which I totally forgot. Anyway. Okay. So, role level security. We have talked about this before. And, well, I guess it's a popular topic. On the phone, if you have anything you're gonna ask me, uh, just unmute yourself Hello? and talk. Was that somebody on the phone I heard? Hello? Yeah, hi there. Yeah. Can you hear me? Yes, Bed Pedro, right? Pedro, from Mallorca, yeah. Awesome, great. Well, what, I am a, yeah. a self-learning Power BI yeah. since six months ago. Nice. I work in a bank. All right. Uh, I, I report every day the closing balance of the situation of our credits, our not paid loans. Yeah. And I every day close the situation from yesterday. And every day I have uh, an Excel file. Yeah. With the closing situation of every day. Got it. So and I'm trying to. Yeah, actually, uh, where are you calling it from? Mallorca. Spain. I, can, can you? Oh, Spain. Okay, I'll just write Spain. Uh, gosh, that's awesome. Okay, so you got a new file every day. Well, the the question or my my, my trouble is because I am trying to report the evaluation of every day of every month 
and every year. But yeah. all mm-hmm. the YouTube channels I find and all maybe all, all, all the videos I I saw yeah. are always reporting the typical situation of a company mm-hmm. that have some sales and have anything. No? But I think my my data is not the same. It's, okay. it's like uh, yeah. It's like I, I compare with a business that yeah. every day wants to know yeah. which situation has his in, in inventory. It's like in a stock a st- yeah, uh, yeah. analysis. Daily, daily inventory, right? Something like that. Yeah. And then I compare how many loans unpaid I have yesterday. Yeah. With the same day of the last month and so on. And I don't find any measure that that okay that this problem really well. Okay, got it, got it. Uh, let's see. So, for one, would you happen to have like uh, sample data or? something that you can you can share that we can work on would you have like a sample file a sample file well i don't understand uh so i would want to see what your data looks like but mostly people their 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 company data is sensitive so they don't want to share that so what folks usually do is they they uh, create something, something kind of with dummy data, and they say, "Avi, my data looks like this." And, okay. And this is what I'm trying to do. I'm trying to calculate this from this data. So, so yeah, I mean, I, I mean, I kind of, kind of understand the situation, but I, yeah, I need to understand a little bit better on what your data actually looks like. Uh, and and go from there. So, do you do you have a, a file or something that you could share? Not now. Not now. Okay. Not, not now. Okay, got it. Let's see if we can kind of create something. All right. So, uh, uh, what about what about like a screenshot of some data row header or something? So, so your data. What is the data source? What is the data coming in from? Is it coming from other Excel file? Is it coming from a SQL system? Uh, where where are you pulling? I get it from a from an Excel file that I'm I uh, I manipulate and I. Uh, with dynamic tables, I I close the situation. We got it. Daily daily with files. My, yeah, yeah. What what are the files? With, with are the, uh huh. What? Excuse me. Uh, I was just gonna say, like, what does the file look like? Is it a nice and pretty table, or is it uh, like a report? Uh, you know, where it's like it's, oh. a, the, it's a table uh, with the detail of every yeah. client. Got it. Got it. With every not paid loan or Got credit it. Perfect. card so, so so the, the day the amount and Got so it. on so date the date client and let's just uh so we'll, we'll build something and we'll see if the, the date is aesthetic it's always yeah so it's it always is for to the previous day yeah yeah you're right so to today you know let's say it's may 10th and you're you're running the clothes, so you're running the clothes for May 9th. Uh, and the date yeah. is always there. And frankly, I'm not sure. I mean, I've seen cases where the date isn't even mentioned in the file, uh, inside the file, because it's in the file name. And it's obvious the date is that. So e- either way is good. And uh, I-, I love uh, doing uh, this guy. Hold on a second. And we're going to grab... A whole bunch of clients for you. There we go. Mm-hmm. And we say this, and this one is this, and and you have what closing balance? Is that no no unpaid balance? What what do you what do you call it? There's some amount. Well, w- no. What amount and is every it? Every day, this kind of table. Uh huh. With and... with the with the situation referred to the previous day. Yeah, got it. But what does it look like? That's okay. what I'm trying to say. So it's got date yeah, client, and if like I'm this. looking at the file, 
it has more data. I know that it has some dollars, right? Yeah. What is that dollar? Is that their unpaid balance? Is that what it is for that day? It's not. Well, I have uh, some columns more. This one could be the unpaid amount, but the loan has a, a, a not. A, I don't know how to say in English. <laughs> Hey, Google Translate, my friend, <laughs> or something. I don't know. Uh, I don't know. Say uh, uh, so. So again, if you can maybe just give me a screenshot a, 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 of a, a, a the thousand loan. Hey, why, why don't we do this? Month. Hey, do me a favor. Go in there, grab the headers for your table, and it's okay for them in Spanish okay. because I'm going to feed them into Google Translate and paste them in. You can paste that in the chat window in Go to Meeting or YouTube. Either one. Just let me know where you pasted it, and uh, we'll see. Uh, yeah, well, that may that may help. Let's let's try that. All right, I'll wait for you. Right. Okay, folks. So we have some time to pass um, while Pedro is working on it. By the way, it's it's always kind of exotic. I always I don't know. I get a kick out of it. So it's one of those things where. Um, so I'm from India, and uh, well, I don't like. I mean, I love my country, of course, and I love visiting and so forth. But uh, it's not exotic for me. I mean, well, it is it is a little bit, but uh, not in the same way, I guess. So we have a friend of ours, and I was hanging out with them. And the funny thing is, once you have kids, I don't know if it's for everybody, but our friends are usually the families of my kids' friends. So, uh, but, you know, that's, that's awesome. So uh, I met with one of their family members who was visiting, and we're talking, and and uh, I said, "Oh, I'm from India." And she says, "Oh, how lucky!" And I'm like, "I never. I guess. I guess so." It's like, "Oh gosh, how lucky!" And then she went on to describe pretty much her love affair with India and how she visited that uh, visited India when she was young and fell in love with that place with the energy and 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 well, it's the chaotic, but that's the energy she liked and and there's so much to explore and she tried yoga, she went to a yoga retreat and she explored some spirituality stuff and said, like, gosh, you guys are like so rich and so kind of happening and so colorful, both uh, kind of internally and externally. so externally it's it's yeah, it's it's a lot of colors, uh, a lot of noise as well, which uh, you know somehow I think she associated with colors as well. I guess could be. Uh, colorful environment it would be noisy and and uh, but she said there's color inside uh, and I'm trying to figure out as in yeah yeah like as in more dimensions there I mean here uh, not to generalize too much but uh, at least her perception was people are more outward focused but in India there's these different layers or different colors if you will all right so that was uh, my mini story I can go on I guess but I'm, I'm gonna check in with Pedro all right Pedro how are we doing Okay, he's, I think he's still working on it. Great. Um, so, folks, if you have any more stories, type them into the YouTube chat window. <laughs> no, I don't think that'll work great. But uh, yeah, if you have any, oh, column level security. Yes, you can do column level security. So, uh, column level security. Actually, we have, uh, should I should really uh, at least add that in my course? Column level security has been done, and I would refer you. Oh, there we go. The, so, folks. If you need access to these no these notes, go to talkpowerbi.com and you're gonna have access to all of this and the files that we created. So uh, go watch the March one, uh, March one video where we talked about column level security. Mm -hmm. Column level security, yes. Um, and 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 yeah, and uh, so let's uh, while we're waiting for Pedro. Maybe we can quickly knock some stuff out. So, row level, oops, uh, row level security, uh, RITI, and column level security. So, I may just say, so we're column level, look at March 1, March 1 uh, Talk Power BI, and row level security. Has been done a few times. Um, let's go. Let's go. Role of security. So these are. There was one spot where we dove 
in. Oh, there we go. So this was also on March one. Oh no, this is this is the column level security. It looked, uh, yeah, this is the column level security. Okay. So column level security, March one. Skip that. Skip that. Role level security. External users. I mean, the idea is simple. So here we had discussed it in time, and sometimes I don't take full notes. Maybe you're gonna find it in the in the recording. So this was discussed on July twentieth, two thousand eighteen. So username is your key. Mm, maybe I'll do a quick version of that. And, and hey, Pedro, if you're if you're done with the column headers, uh, then just uh, just just uh, just speak up and let me know. So column of security, uh, go check the notes there because we did cover it extensively. For role of security and the scenario that you had, where uh, so there is, it's it's really so simple. So for role of security, oops, uh, insert table. It is name access or access yeah let's go with that so let's say that there is John and John has access to USA and then there is Steve who has access to Canada and then there is Raul who has access to both USA and Canada and that's I think was the question both department one and two yeah so that's uh, actually I'm gonna copy that and stick that in here oops Oh, uh, messed up. Let's try that again. So I'll call that out. So this was Alan. Uh, and somebody else asked for a column level. Danny. What happened here? Oh, shoot. <laughs> Hold on, guys. Okay, we're doing now. We got it, Danny. Oh, can't arrange the headers. Okay, all right. Well, just unmute your phone then, and let's talk. See if we can. Uh, I mean, it's not like I have anything better to do on a Friday morning. I mean. Frankly, I really don't. <laughs> I mean, I love this stuff, man. I love you guys. Love me hanging out with you. So, yeah, I don't have anything better to do. Uh, I know the dog is going to need walking in a little bit, but we got time before that. I don't uh, hear a dog barking. So, um, uh, so okay, so Pedro, let me just wrap up, wrap this up really quick, and then we can continue on a journey. Uh, so, we have access. Uh, so, this is... So, this becomes a challenge. Like, right? Raul has access to both USA and Canada, and how do you do that? Well... <laughs> You could try this, but that's a terrible idea. Ooh, it's just horrible. Just not good. So we're not going to do that. We're going to do this. We're going to say Raul has access to use in Canada. And of course, you can see that it doesn't matter. I mean, Raul can have access to 10 different countries or the whole world. I mean, you can you can store that here. But then how do you implement it? So the way you implement it is this. You go to your model and you load that table in. Now, what I would say is that usually this table... Uh, this table, this table, uh, let me just color it differently, otherwise it'll never stand out. Table design, mm, this one, that looks nice. Yeah, so this table should ideally be coming from table access table, ideally coming from HR or some, or some system, I mean, it's not fun maintaining it manually, even for a small group. It's just not fun. So if uh, and and of course, so it was um, I'll admit that the only times we've done it, uh, this was in Microsoft. We connected to our HR system, so the HR system told us that who was in the North America sales team, and hence they had access to North America, who was in the or oh, whatever, you know. So they they had all the distribution there. Uh, but doesn't matter. That we're getting this table from somewhere, right? So this table is there, and what you're going to do is you're going to load that table in. 
and you're going to put it right here. Uh, actually, let's try this. So you're going to put the table here, and this is going to be your access table, just the way we described. And what you're going to do is uh, is connect it. So the access table has this Canada country thing, right? And that connects to, oops, where did I go? There. And that one would connect to your 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 territories table. And this has to be a bi-directional relationship because it needs to flow up, right? Makes sense? Flow up. Normally, relationships don't. Mind wise is all of your relationships should look like this. One to many and the arrow flowing down. But this one, we're going to make it uh, kind of bi-directional. So we make it bi-directional. And, and uh, let me just draw like another arrow just to remind us. So bi-directional relationship. <laughs> Hopefully, we'll all remember that. Uh, and then, um, um, well, that's that's it. So now, so this one has 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 username and the the country, right? So this is the let's go back over here, and this one is the country that they have access to. I want to minimize that. And now you're gonna go to your Power BI model. And set up role level security, manage roles, same stuff. And actually, I'm not going to show you the steps. Basically, you, you're going to say, uh, you're going to say, um, user username. So you're going to say the access username equals the username coming in. Now, how would that evaluate in, in, in a live system? Well, username would give something like, well, it'll, it'll probably give like johncontoso.com. So actually, that's what you need in here as well. So john at contoso.com. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And Raul, oh, I actually didn't want that. Mm -hmm. So you're gonna you're gonna feed that. So username coming in is this, and what it's gonna do is when you set up role level security like that, is that it's gonna match and it's gonna say, okay, I got you, you're John Contoso. That means you are this, and that's where the bi-directional filtering kicks in. So now the username, the access table is filtered, but because that is filtered, the relationship flows uphill. The filter flows uphill, which normally it doesn't do, but it does because it's a bi-directional relationship and filter is a country table to USA. And now you only see USA sales. And of course, it works for Raul as well. It comes in, a username is this, well, it filters to the set. The country is US Canada, that flows up. Filter is the territory table, which in turn flows down, filters the sales table, symbol. All right, cool, so uh, we'll call it out and we'll just say uh, bi-directional relationship. And oops, we're gonna copy this one, stick that in here, and call it good. Alan, let me know. All right, Pedro, you still still on the call? Pedro, my friend, you still on? Um, hmm. Okay. Uh, well, if if you can hear me, then uh, uh, then come back. But folks, um, the odd thing is when I heard Pedro describe the problem, I don't think this is a hard problem at all. Well, for one, uh. All right, Alan, thank you so much. I mean, gosh, I, I didn't expect that reaction, but good. Yeah, it's always good to see that. That's great. Um, yeah, oh yeah, gosh, it's, uh, yeah, yeah, you're right. So, yeah, Alan's saying that doesn't look as complicated. Um, yeah, I like, I like simple. <laughs> okay, great. So, uh, so, uh, Pedro, uh, let me, let me make sure I, I don't have a, like a mic drop on here. So, uh, Steve or somebody else can maybe one of you can just talk to me. 
Let's see. Sure. Can, okay. you, can you hear me? Yeah. This this is Steve. Okay, cool. All right. So, Pedro, if, uh, uh, Pedro are, you, are you back on? Did I hear you for a second? That might have been me, Avi Grant. Okay, okay, got it. All right. All right. So, uh, yeah, I didn't think the problem was hard at all. Because for one, um, uh, he has a daily file, which I would expect shows the right number, right? So it, he has a daily file, which shows the right number. All we need to do is just pull all those files together. So, of course, now that's one way to do it. There are other ways to do it. So let's come back here and kind of explore that a little bit. Uh, so this would be... Uh, 1022 and this is closing balance over period or something like that so option one is is you have uh, just pull all files together that's it so you have uh, whatever like on this date Lorena had uh, so let's just uh, put some uh, numbers here and between uh, 1 comma 10 uh, times 50 something like that uh, actually 100 let's try that even our numbers so we got that uh, boom done so so we know exactly so it sounded like Pedro does create this report every day which uh, is the oh, 59 the day before these were all the unpaid amounts and he did mention that he has more columns but uh, uh, I don't think that adds any complexity. So for, if for every single day we know exactly what that number is, then we just pull pull it in. And and now we have we can show a daily trend. So like, oh. So now we have all the files from going from whatever, two years back, five years back to today. Um, and we can say, yep, so on May 9th, it, the, the total unpaid was this. For Lurina, or, or maybe we can trend it even for one customer. Or a group of customers. Oh, show me all the customers in California. All that sort of stuff. So that's the awesomeness of Power BI. And you get it for free. You don't have to do anything smart. <laughs> well, yeah. Yeah, you don't have to do uh, much for that. Uh, you do have to understand a bit of modeling and just do it right. Um, so that's that's option one. What is another option? I thought I had something in mind. Mm. Oh, oh, yes. Yes, so option two if you think about it, that is what I really want to want to do, is not have Pedro create a file every day manually. <laughs> it's, I don't know, it's just, whatever is being done manually, can we automate that? Can we automate the daily manual file? Oh my gosh, can we do that? I. I would say yes. Go on them and just say yes. Uh, then that would be super awesome. So whatever steps, I don't. I don't care what it is. I don't really care what it is. This is data. You're manipulating it. Human learning comes before machine learning. If a human can do it, I would say there are, there are pretty good chances that you can teach a machine, which is Power BI, uh, to do it too. So that would be kind of level, level. So uh, maybe it's not options. Maybe this is like level one. And this is like level two. Is there another level? Uh, I'm not sure. Can we automate? So we, once we automate the daily manual file, then actually you have a choice. So we've talked about how this, uh, modeling is a set of decision points. A set of decision points, assumptions, it's translation, and other stuff. So it's, it's go back in the notes and check, check modeling. Um, so here, uh, can we automate the daily manual file? Uh, we can automate manual daily manual file daily manual file and then but then leave that other step the same we pull all the files together we actually go to all the files and pull it together or we automate the daily file and adapt that same process BBIX file I don't know to do full full year or multiple years or all time and of course if we do that then we really don't need the daily file we just has a process or BBIX which which BBIX uh, shows closing 
balance or unpaid balance, whatever he's focused on, for all time. And you can see that, you can see the trend. And if you wanted to see daily, let's go, oh, oh, but what was it yesterday? That's the only thing that I care about. That's just a report. And now we get a single source of truth. If you've gone through my tutorial, which uh, you should have, of course, the folks who are inside the course have. Um, if you haven't yet, then just go to my channel and the good stuff is right at the top, right here. So that's the key one. So the first video here, it, it actually shows up in here as well when I'm not live. And uh, the, the first video there, oops, is just 60 minutes long and it talks about this whole, uh, uh, this whole, uh, let me see if I can find it, the single source of truth. And that is a gorgeous thing to see. Here we go. Right, so you want to be in this land. Oops, I messed up. There we go. Uh, so you want to be in this land where you create just one model and it has everything. And if somebody wants like a report, it's just one thing connected to that amongst others. All right, cool. So Pedro, I don't know what happened, but we didn't, uh, yeah, we, we seem to have lost you in the audio here. Um, so, so Avi Grant here, while mm -hmm. we're on this topic, could you yeah. just cover uh, what, what kind of flexibility you have if you point to a folder as your data source? Yeah. So if we have an automated process where a new file is added to a folder every day, yeah. Would it just would it, if you built a model that uh, works well with the other files, mm -hmm. uh, will it consume the data from the, each new file as it comes in daily? Now, of course, it sets up on how you have set up the refresh. Uh, so, of course, you can do it manually. In that, then every time you click it, it's going to pull it in. But if you have set it automated, if you have set it daily, yeah, it's going to pull it in daily. Now, of course, in in practice, usually what happens is that oh, we're supposed to get the file at two a.m. So we set up the refresh at 5 a.m., but sometimes the file is late. So even there, we sometimes, even if it's a daily file, we set up like a few refreshes every single day, just so if, even if it's late, we catch it. But yeah, it just runs, and if there's a new file, just picks it up. Fantastic. Yeah. Now, if um, if you have the challenge that the uh, source files are commingled with other files that you yeah. do not want to pull in, oh, I love can that you one any kind of syntax like you know get all files that begin with this as a prefix or something like that absolutely or... yeah yeah so actually that's a good one i'm gonna uh note that one down and charles i i see your question as well i'm gonna get to it in a second um uh, files from a folder but oops but not all files and we'll say hashtag uh, quick tip. Okay. Um, yeah, you can you can definitely do that. So um, you go to a folder, and it doesn't give you an option by default. Let's see if we can we can kind of quickly kind of mock it up. But yeah, you can basically any pattern. If you have any pattern, again, if a human can do it, then the machine would be able to do it. So if there is a pattern that a human can can see and say, oh, the file names start with this, end with this. This is the extension any of that it's, it's just yeah I mean once you step into it it's gonna be like super easy point of a folder um, let's see if you can try that so if you say new source from folder yeah so Charles that's oh which uh, yeah, that's odd. Charles is asking almost exactly the same thing. So what do you mean by automating daily file? Is that like importing data from a, a folder to that new file? Well, so the daily file, let, let's talk, let's, so, so let's just talk about this one. So one, what we're looking at was level one was pulling all files together to give a total view. And this one, yeah, the way you automate it, you, you point that new system to say, go to this folder that has my daily reports and pull all of them in, right? and you automate that. Now, how do you actually automate the daily file? Well, that would de depend on what is his system. Like, how is Pedro calculating this? How is the human calculating it? He's clearly doing it manually every day. What are the steps he takes? Now, I would imagine that he maybe runs some kind of a report from a server, 
and it's possible that the report just gives him that number, then we need to, you know, kind of say, okay, cool. Well, then what is that report doing? What data source is that report connecting to? And we connect Power BI to that report. So, so yeah, I mean, that's just going to be based on, well, how, how it's set up in your system. So we'll, we'll automate that so that Pedro doesn't have to manually go in and, and uh, in, in the least worst case scenario, he's just hitting refresh. But uh, I would imagine that he's probably doing a lot more. He's like, oh, I do this, and I click here, and then I export here, and then I do this, and then I reformat, and then I add this formula, and some this happens, and then I have these formulas, and then I unpivot, whatever. Right? So whatever that process is, we'll just tackle it head on and say, yep, okay, let's automate the whole thing. So that'll depend on what they're doing. So let's come back here. Uh, quick folder thing is on, and we're going to say folder. And it's coming up. Yeah, there we go. And we're just going to say, I don't have that many files here, but I think I have at least two, which is actually, I do have a few files here. So, um, so Grant, um, I, I realize that it, it, it's not like straightforward because it, it presents itself in this way and it's not clear like how do I filter um, but um, yeah I think I always get tripped up a little bit on this like combine and edit or edit um, I don't want to combine yet because it's got like lots of crazy files so I think edit edit is a good way to go but yeah here you go right I mean now I can say just just you know, could just kind of CSV, but really you have all the capability of uh, Power BI. So in here, you can do more, and you can say, I don't know, I only want Chicago, and you can filter on that. And then once you're done, to just the files you want, you're gonna hit this what I call the action button, content, and poof, it sucks it in. Does that does that help? Absolutely, absolutely. Yeah. Uh, so you've opened my eyes to the fact that this is an option that is available, and I'll explore it. Yeah. Uh, because in the example I used earlier, I'm connecting to a whole hand, boatload of Excel spreadsheets, and I built yeah. those connections individually. Ah, uh, yes, yes. And so now I can explore as I go into the phase two and the new design yeah, and take yeah. a look at just connecting to the folder and filtering out the ones that I need. And that that yeah. that's outstanding. Yeah. So uh, we we ran a test. There was somebody on an earlier talk bar we had call where they said, "Oh, things are slow. Things are slow. Things are slow." And this is a switch we made, and the performance improvement was was really impressive. And again, I mean, sometimes you know you're you're waiting on a refresh for like I don't know, like five minutes, and if the five minutes becomes one minute, that's like awesome. And of course, um, this is usually a problem for the author, and that, and that is a real problem. As an author, I want to move as fast as I can. It's often not a problem for the end user because authors can set up automated refresh. Like in our system, our report took one hour to refresh, but none of the users cared because when they came in the morning, their report was refreshed. But that meant was when I was working in there as an author and God forbid I needed to refresh a table to get something new, then it was a long wait. But um, but yeah, so this does uh, speed up things and that's a, that's a great option there. Okay. Hey, Avi. Hey, you see, yeah. In that filter, you may want to show that that text filters because it really has a lot of options under the uh, drop down box. Oh yeah, but you so, talked yeah, about it, but you back, didn't. Yeah. It, where you can say yeah. contains this, ends with this. Oh, love it! Yeah, good, good idea. Like so, in the yep. So, folks, if you go here, uh, you can see a lot of these are built in, and and and, and so ninety nine percent of the stuff that I do is uh, just clicking buttons here. 1% I dive into M, but it's frankly really empowering to know that I have that capability if you, if you need. So there's lots of options here. Contains does not contain a lot of this, but if you ever need something really complicated, you can you can go to M and uh, you know uh, do the language there. So Steve, actually, I'm glad you spoke up because I think it was you, unless I'm mistaken, who who likes to keep all their incoming files in one folder and then uses kind of pattern matching to pick out specific files? Is it somebody else? Uh, no, that wasn't me. But I I do use this folder option a yeah. lot. Um, but you know you, you it's, yeah. it's certainly an option if if and it, and you can. Um, yeah. So so what yeah. I saw was it, it was some student in the Parvia family. So generally when I'm working with like 
input files and all that stuff, I'll, I'll, I'll create folders. That's just, I don't know, that's just something that I was used to. And I will say, so I would do it on SharePoint and I'll say, yeah, here's a folder and Jason from marketing team, you put your files here or something like that. And if I'm talking to a vendor, like an external vendor, we work in the Arvado, it's like, oh, your, your files end up here. And, and I would do it in separate folders. But um, uh, the, the, the person yeah. uh, was dealing with, so, somehow their volume of incoming files was, 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 was substantial. And the route they had taken was, and it's kind of a trade-off, but it, for for them, it was simpler to have everything be in one folder, and they just yeah. used use kind of the pattern. They'll say, "Oh, yep, I'm always yeah. going to this folder, but then I'm picking just and, these files." Yeah. Now that I think about it, I did have an application where I I did that, um, where I had two different companies, uh -huh. and I I had a each company would have its name in the file name. Yeah. And rather than making a folder, just too yep. many folders, oh, yeah, too, yeah. too, too yeah, much exactly. of that. So you yes, just, yes, yes. So I you have, you, you yeah. know, contains RET or contains MEAD and yep. it just would filter exactly. out just for that, for that. Exactly. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Thanks. I, I so for, I forgot about that. <laughs> <laughs> well, you, you taught me that one. All right. It's great. Um, hey, that's um, brilliance in action right there. <laughs> All right, great. Um, oh, would it be nice to... Oh, uh, okay, let's see some of the comments that came in. Um, did you, Alan was great. So Alan is saying, would it be nice to put a wildcard asterisk for those that can see all as we have many countries? Oh. Oh. Oh, boy. Actually, you can do that. <laughs> Uh, Adam, you, you ask and you should receive. What can I say? All right, so there's a super boss, um, Satya, right? He sees everything. Uh, so Satya at, he's, he probably does head Contoso. And, and we want to say, oops, we want to say star. You can do that. How the heck can you make that work? Man, we are uber powerful folks if you haven't realized that it's just incredible uh, i wake up every day and i do this stuff it's insane so this is how the file would come in but we have the kitchen of power bi and, and folks who are probably in my course like know exactly where i'm going with this right i mean you know or or you know in a bit they will um so yeah we have the kitchen of power bi so what we're going to do is go into well by the way, did I, did I say it out loud? It's, it's a query editor. It's magical. That's where all the clean shape transform happens. So so again, I always said that this table is coming from um, somewhere. It, it's somewhere. It exists somewhere. It's either in the HR system or it's in an Excel spreadsheet or it's in a SharePoint list or something like that, right? So it, it is somewhere. And wherever it exists, we don't ask people to say Raul and then repeat it, however many countries are there in the world. That, that would be insane. Now imagine if this is not from a system, it's coming from a manual table. That would be insane. So we don't want to do that. We just want to say Satya, star. Satya is a big boss. It asks us to do everything. Or, hey, let's do wild cards. Let's do uh, Jennifer and uh, dot com. And oh, oh my gosh. So guys, Alan, it's just a while earlier. I mean, this is blowing my mind just thinking about it, that this is possible. But you could say, um, you could say um, continent North America. Uh, let's keep going. Why not? Uh, let's do, um, uh, gosh, I'm having trouble with my name. Um, let's do, uh, we haven't had Chris yet. So Chris at Contoso.com. And you can say, oh, Chris has the US Northwest region. And you can go on and on. So you can just say the level, the level that they are at. And I don't know, if you're doing this, maybe we're gonna say um, country, uh, call them USA, uh, you don't have to do that. So in our query editor, we're gonna read this. We're gonna read this and we're gonna say, oh, if you are a continent North America, now in our territories tables, in our territory table, we have uh, uh, we have the the full grain, and and again the grain could start from a zip code. I don't know. It 
could be like zip code it could be county and then you have state and then you have states are divided into region which are divided into countries uh, which are divided into I don't know like sales areas or something like in in Microsoft we had uh, EMEA so Europe and Middle East uh, we had Asia Pacific APAC we had um, North America and we had LATAM they called it Latin America so uh, so yeah so that can be like bigger than a country and I don't know maybe there's um, well gosh maybe maybe it's not continent ah well whatever you, you can have continents too Although that doesn't quite fit in the hierarchy because EMEA is, is two continents. So uh, uh, one of those, uh, something like that. So you have that table. So you have this, oops, uh, you have this table of information and you have this table coming in. So again, folks, human learning comes before machine learning. Human learning precedes machine learning. Could a human do this? All right, so guys, I mean, this stuff is simple. We just overcomplicate it. Actually, let me let me stay there a little bit, right? Now, uh, before I'm gonna give you the whole explanation, which is actually not much, you already know it. Uh, it would seem like a hard problem, or you wouldn't know how to do it, right? But again, if you lay it out now that I've walked you through a little bit, and that I've asked you this way, could a human do it? The answer is, duh, <laughs> obviously, right? So, what if it's that easy for humans why is it hard for us humans to do it in Power BI well because the thing is is not because we're not smart enough that's not the case you're not dumb enough that's the case uh, so so the reality is that Power BI engine is kind of dumb it, it's because it's very mechanical humans were, were not mechanical no, no part of us is mechanical. So what we do is we think in these intuitive leaps. So we're not smart enough. Uh, yeah, so we're not, it's not that we're not smart enough. No, we're not dumb enough. So humans, we think in intuitive leaps. Um, but machines don't. So that's what you need to do. There's nothing to learn. You need to dumb yourself down. You need to dumb yourself down and slow down the intuitive process and just break it down step by step. And guys, believe me, it takes practice. <laughs> you know, so uh, uh, you're gonna get better at it. But if you've seen me on the stock bar BI, if you've seen me enough times, that's all I do, right? I mean, take this problem and just break it down in these small steps. And each step is is like duh, obvious, and and it's simple to solve. So, so can a human do it? Damn right you can. Right? If you tell me that, yep, U.S. Northwest, and you give me a mapping of like, yep, you know, so Northwest has. Um, uh, Washington, Oregon, Idaho. Uh, can I expand Chris at Contoso to say, uh, Chris Contoso and expand it to Washington, Oregon, Idaho? I can do that. Can I do it for this? Can I do it with this? Great. Same thing you're doing with Power BI. All right, so we're not gonna, we're gonna do it live in the session for one, because I don't have like all the data lined up, so it'll just take too long just to line up the data. But it, once once you understand that, it's not, not, uh, it's not a complicated problem at all. All right, cool. So hopefully that helped. Mm, let's do one last one. And then it's dog walking times. I did want to do a shout out to our Power BI challenge again. And my friends, there is still time to join. And if you have joined, then make sure to check your email. And I'm, I'm just gonna actually, you know what? I'll just I'll just put it put it right here. So this is our, our challenge community. Now it'll be a little weird, my friend, if you join the challenge community but didn't sign up for the challenge. So uh, uh, so sign up for the challenge at. Uh, powerbichallenge.com I don't want to misspell it so that's the challenge sign up and one of those things so so, uh, so did I show you guys what is in the challenge so this is what's happening inside the challenge is we're working through a real Power BI project now of course, of course if you follow me on the channel real Power BI is something that I really believe in and Microsoft MVP and a best selling Power Oh gosh, I get a, um, the autoplay always gets me. How do I mute it? Oh, mute side, there we go. So uh, Real Power BI, I'm, well, I've talked about it enough times, I'm gonna say it one more time. I believe learning, the best way to learn is by doing. And I think practicing with like AdventureWorks, Contoso, airline uh, departures, <laughs> you know, NBA scores, or, or um, 
you know, I don't know, you and population, whatever, any of those things. I never really enjoy that. It's okay. It's, it's all right, but it's more like hitting a tennis ball against the wall. For me, I would take playing tennis with a real player any single day, right? So, you know, if you're going back and forth with a client, that's the real experience. And it is so different. And again, it's like hitting the tennis against a tennis ball against a wall. Are you going to get better at tennis? Well, not quite. I mean, most likely the first time you face a player, you're going to self-combust. It, you're not even going to be able to put up a fight. It just doesn't work that way. The other player is not going to act like a wall. So the difference is just a whole different level. It's just totally different level. So, so, our, uh, so of course, we keep trying to introduce and, and anything we can do to kind of bring that experience closer to the students, we do that. So, so we have done this. Uh, let's try that. So we have done this uh, quite a bit. So we had, uh, we have, uh, we had, I think five students, five different students present the their projects which they had done recently in the in the recent round. So I was trying to bring up a nice photo of uh, everybody. Oh, there we go. Right. So all of these folks, and there were a few more who joined later. They presented their projects. So and and it was there was a ski resort, there was a, a freight company in Africa. Uh, uh, I think there was a manufacturing company. So yeah, lots of uh, lots of exciting stuff, different projects. So that was Real Power BI. But the very first one, my friends, the original Real Power BI is always going to be close to my heart, was Kimberly Murray. And for one, she's a real inspiration in a few different ways, my friends, a few different ways. One is, is that, uh, is that, I was going somewhere with this. She's an inspiration because, <laughs> okay, I'm glad she's not watching. <laughs> like, I'll be really, well, so for one, she defies conventions. She defies conventions, all right? So when I think hairstylist, <laughs> maybe maybe all of you are not like me. Maybe most of you are not like me. But man, I get my haircuts at uh, super cuts or great clips, all right? So <laughs> when I think hairstylist, I just don't think really rich, successful person. And again, I feel kind of apologetic for that, but we all have our biases. And, and, and really, it, it's, it, it, you're better off by acknowledging your biases than saying, no, 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 I'm, I, I never think like that. You know, so uh, people who, are, who say that, uh, no, I don't discriminate against women or, or, or minority or anything like that, in real tests, they, they were found to be the most discriminatory. Wow, I was proud I could say that word. So, uh, so that was my perception, and she, of course, blew it out of the water. Here, stylist. Now that I met her, I realized that yeah, sure, there are stylists who who are uh, working with celebrities and who are celebrities waiting on them, right? So, so yeah, so there's levels of success in 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 pretty much any uh, niche, and you can craft that. Same thing with Power BI. Same thing with so uh, a lot of you maybe uh, sometimes I talk to students and they are kind of apologetic. They're like, oh yeah, I'm, I'm only this, yeah, you know, and I'm like, no, no, don't discount that. I mean, what if you were the number one person in that? And of course, that's what I talked about. So if you join uh, join the challenge Power BI at PowerBIChallenge.com, that's exactly what I talked about in the day one webinar, where how do you become that 1%, right? So she's, she embodies that. Wow, I never quite thought about it that way. Maybe there's a reason I selected her for this uh, for the Power BI Challenge example. So she embodies that, and, and she has this other thing going for her, which is when she got successful, she didn't like retire to an island or something. She turned around and said, hey, how can I help others? There are lots of hairstylists out there who are struggling. And I can show them. I can show them. I can, I can show them how to make things work. And, and these are the tricks. And this is how you do. This is how you grow big. And this is how you can raise your prices, get a better client, all of that stuff. So she turned around and became a business coach. And that is where, when she reached out to me, and she said, Avi, I'm teaching them some of these key numbers, the key financial numbers that they need to track, and then I'm going to give them a system. So think about this. I mean, in in a way, she's exotic, right? I mean, hair stylist, hair stylist, the business of that. It sounds like weird, but in a way, all business is the same thing. It's all adventure works, my friends. <laughs> you know. So what is she looking at? She's she's looking at some KPIs, right? So she she's got some numbers that they need to watch, and they come with, in her case. Um, you know, kind of uh, steps or actions. And, and in her case, she has buttoned it down for her clients. Like, you need to do these three things, right? And again, in, in, in our business, we may not have an awesome coach like Kimberly Marie, so we might be figuring that out on our own. 
where we're saying, oh yeah, we need to grow our business. We need to impact our KPIs and the KPIs can be revenue, could be other things. It could be lives. It could be, I don't know, like in my case, like students, number of students I'm reaching. It could be whole different things, right? So, but then we have an idea of steps or actions we're going to take to impact them. And we just use that too much to ask for that I be able to see that what impact that's having and not in a year from now, not three years from now. What about tomorrow? What about next week, next month, right? So, so that, and, and she, so she said, I'm, I'm teaching them the system. I have the steps. I know the KPIs that are important. I just want to build a system for myself and them that they can use to track it easily. Because if they can't track it and it's not easy enough, we're not going to do it. So guys, the best example that I have is backups. Now, uh, who here has been regularly backing up their computer? <laughs> and maybe you are. Well, I know I am because it's automatic. Automatic. It's automatic, my friends. I use OneDrive and I love it. Love it because I don't have to think about it. It not only backs up stuff, it does automatic versioning. Oh, please. Automatic versioning. So my team is sometimes like, oh, I don't want to overwrite that file. I'm like, overwrite it all you want. I, we can go back in the version history and get it, right? So it's just such a peace of mind. Before that, I had bought three different external hard drives, and my plan was to go every month to all the machines and computers in a home and back it up. You know how many times that happened? Zero. <laughs> I still have those hardware sitting there. You know, I would start with the first computer and maybe kick off a backup and then just, you know, go on to something, right? So if it's not simple enough, sometimes it doesn't happen. That's the life that we live in. And it applies to Power BI as well as our lives, right? So what's important to you is not about time. My friends, we all have 24 hours in a day. So people talk about, uh, so of course, uh, the enrollment to our Power BI course is open as well. Uh, we have invited all of our uh, Power BI Challenge participants who were there at the day one webinar. Uh, so people say, hey, uh, Avi, this is great. Everything sounds good, but man, I'm too busy. Right? So of course, uh, I have two two things to say to them. It was like, when? One is, okay, cool. Uh, tell me, when are you not going to be busy? Next week? What about next month? Next year? <laughs> and come on, let's be truthful. That really doesn't happen. And the other question is, what, what about the folks who joined? What do you think? They just had what they had 48 hours in a day, they had extra hours in a day, or they're just sitting around idle. None of those things. All the folks that we have are, are kind of driven. They're Power BI enthusiasts at the column, they're professionals. And and yeah, I mean, Steve here, he talks to me about how he how he takes Saturday as a leisure day, focusing on Power BI stuff, just tinkering around, right? So it's not about time, it's about prioritization. So, so back here, uh, so this is what our goal was. And that's what, we, that's what we're building in here. So, of course, we did this as a real project. This was back in May 2018. So, um, uh, I don't want to bring out Kimberly Murray for, for, uh, to work with uh, everybody who's going through the challenge. That would have been weird. Although, maybe we should bring her back as a, as a guest appearance. I think she'll get a kick out of it that what we have built out of this. So, uh, so, we have tried to replicate as close as we can to the real experience. Uh, we have simplified it because again we ended up spending a month with her. We not ended up that was a plan to begin with, so you know I mean, we want to make it kind of straightforward. So we have simplified it a little bit, but it's still the same experience, the same things that we discovered for ourselves. We're like, oh, oh, can we do this? Oh no, and and that's what what I call about kind of peeling the onion. So that is powerbichallenge.com, and that's what you can experience right now, my friends. If you just dial this number now, <laughs> just go to powerbichallenge.com, and I'll walk you through. Uh, so it's welcome to get started, and then day one, we kind of down, uh, you know, frankly, we focus on on kind of a little bit of uh, the query editor and stuff. And at the end of each day, it is a uh, is a mini challenge, and uh, we don't we don't uh, uh, you know antagonize you too much. We do give you the solution in the next day, but of course, with the challenge, we want you to try it out and see if it works. If not, you know, come back and check out the solution. And then of course, day two, we did a little more cleanup and so forth. And day three, we're visiting DAX. And uh, uh, and we have content planned for the next few days as well. Um, and of course, uh, so shout out to that, Power BI Challenge, sign up. And if you are in the challenge, so guys, this was um, kind of a, la uh, 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 yeah, I, I mean, this was a last minute decision. I wasn't really sure to um, how to set up the group. And I know how we run it in the class, but we were changing so many things around the challenge by the way, this is this is not only the content is new, the way we're running it is new as well. 
uh, earlier it, it was I was showing up on live classes teaching about this stuff but then I realized that doesn't make any sense because that's not how I teach my course right? I mean my course is all recorded and then we show up and if there are any questions we, we kind of take that in the class so we run these sessions with class why wouldn't I mean that I do that because that's I feel is the most efficient even if you're busy everything is broken up into short videos three to seven minute videos and that's exactly the way this is right I mean this is like yep you watch uh, four six minutes five minutes seven minutes and then work a little bit on the challenge or work uh, you know on the files and, and that's it of course you have to download files as well so yeah so now this is running exactly the way our course runs and that makes so much sense so so we were changing so much Kimberly Murray the first time we've done it this way uh, earlier we had some weird stuff which I feel so embarrassed about I'm like oh I'm sorry I, got, I put you guys through that so now we have this this structured one and we were doing it through kind of recorded steps and so forth so I had kind of uh, delayed this but I'm glad I decided to do it so again until la yesterday we had 29 folks there are hundreds I know, there are actually hundreds and hundreds of folks going through the challenge right now and we just had 29 join up and I could be like bummed about it or so oh guys look at me you know what you messed up but guys you know done is better than perfect frankly so by the way some of you may have gotten a, a day three challenge email on day two that was a mistake and of course the content inside that email was all wrong because it was talking about the last challenge so sorry about that but guys done is better than perfect because here's what I'm not against perfection I'm all for perfection go for it but we often use perfection as an excuse for a fear of failure we're, we're not gonna face up to that we're not gonna say those words we're just gonna justify it we're gonna say oh no I'm, I'm not afraid what are you talking about I mean, I'm not afraid at all it's just I just want this to happen and that to happen and this to happen and that to happen and then I'm gonna do it and and we live our life as an if then if then else statement Ooh, is that deep Maybe it is. <laughs> Maybe they're profound. Right. So so yeah, I did it. And 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 guess what I found? These twenty nine people, twenty nine people, twenty nine people, and now there are more. Thank you. Thank you for new folks to join. So if you are in the challenge, I I, I want you to join. And uh, so guys, um I'm pretty ambivalent on Facebook. So sometimes you get thought, like, oh I'm not on Facebook. Uh, guess what? I'm not on Facebook either. So my friends, if you go check out my profile, are, are my two colleagues, uh, Chris and Pranav, the the members of the team Avi. And yeah, so I'm not I'm not doing anything in there, but I love the groups functionality. So, uh, and I, I know students have done that where it just uh, so we for our students we have an online forum as well. So Facebook isn't the only option, but um, but yeah, you can just be there and just be on groups and that's it. So so here I was I was really I really loved all interaction. For one, I love the origin stories. I love hearing. I think we have a, a, a I think we have a winemaker. Somebody talked about that. Yeah, somebody, somebody, somebody. Oh, I love that one. Let me search that up. So yeah, lots of good stuff. Oh, Jeff got one, is it? Yeah, yeah. Look at that. You know, I'm only a winemaker. And 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 um, yeah. Anyway, so uh, join the challenge, join the challenge, join the group. And <laughs> I felt there was a third thing, uh, but I can't remember. Uh, so that's it. Let's do maybe kind of a last uh, check on something. Oh wow, what happened? I take my eyes off the chat window and it blows up. Mm. Da, da, da. Yeah, yeah, yeah. What is it? Oh gosh, yeah, some really testy questions. Excel 365. Uh, so Como Patel, Como. Uh, I, I would say the best thing that we have going on right now is the Power BI challenge. Yeah, there we go. So sign up for that. That's that's a great great way to go. Um, okay, for some folks are helping each other with formulas. I'll skip that. Um, I'm requiring to have to change the table dynamically based on the selection of dimensions. The dimensions are coming from different tables. How, oh, how can I enroll in the course? So folks who are part of the challenge they get an invite to the course and that was in the day one so you once you sign up for the course you, you can just go uh, you know access the the day one uh, actually the day one webinar is here maybe we should move it move it down there 
actually I, I will do that so I'll move this guy no uh, this one into day one and that is our invite to the course and yeah we would love to see you as part of the learn power bi family and i also wanted to say thanks uh if some of them are maybe still watching on youtube is some folks join who are already members of the learn power bi program and they had the kindest things to say about the program and and that's awesome and of course i can't take full credit because the program has become so much more than just Avi teaching. It's it's a big part of that is the community and everything in there. So uh, I'm glad. I was I was certainly glad to hear that. Mm, yeah. So Ian is saying love seeing your comments and stuff. All right, cool folks. So uh, Narsimha, what you're asking? So let's end on that. Is automatic. If I have, let's go over here. If I have my uh, I was just checking the dimension. Okay, so you're using the data warehouse terminology, which is uh, dimension and fact tables. Uh, I'm not going to use that. So I'm going to call dimension tables my lookup tables, and they're up here. And and the fact tables are, is what I call a data table, right? So just just bear with me there. So data table, lookup tables, and you just connect them through a relationship, and you can slice and dice any which way you want. So now if I want to see my sales by customer country or customer address or their occupation, I can do that. I can see things about my product color, product category, whatever. I can see by month, financial year. So yeah, that that is automatic. I'm wondering if I missed a part of the question. Change the table dynamically based on selection dimension. So, I mean, you, you don't really change the table, but you can change what is being shown, which is the same thing because the user is not going to know. Right, so if they say, oh, subcategory is this, or country is USA, and then the result is filtered down, as far as I know, as far as they're concerned, the, the, the sales is filtered. Sales is just that. Um, if you, if, uh, so maybe maybe I did miss the question, but um, I would also do a shout out to the, uh, on my channel, uh, go, for the, go for the tutorial. And that's got some good, good stuff in there and, and actually the tutorial is going to show up right here <laughs> as soon as we get off live all right folks so i'll go walk the dog and i'll catch you next week oh i i, I forgot about one announcement so which is which is a big which is that we're we're doing something which is close to my heart we're, we're talking about the woman in power bi and just kind of the role is there a disparity why are there only 20% women in my course out of 500 students? And is this something we can do about it? Is this something we can do about the bigger Power BI industry? I'm not going to go beyond that, like IT and tech and whatever. Um, I'm just going to stay kind of where, where my focus is. And yeah, so I um, have a daughter. She's 10 years old. And I just want to leave a, a better place for her. So if there is something that uh, we can do, and, and we're starting with, frankly, I didn't feel that I was in a position to really form an opinion even like what what exactly is the right thing to do so um we're gonna invite some folks and, and we're gonna talk about this and we'll see what comes out so that's happening on friday may 31st i'm excited about that all right cool friends we'll see you next time power on